Well, hello, and welcome to Pizza Steve TV. In this episode, this is called The Traffic Report. Now, on the show, The Traffic Report, I'm reporting about traffic. So you're just going to find me driving through traffic, telling you stories, and complaining about traffic. It's really going to be like a stream of consciousness type of thing, and I'll try to have a subject for each one. So this could be the first of many traffic reports, and I hope you guys come along for the journey. I'll see you there. The traffic report, I'm reporting about traffic and these barricades can cause damage to your vehicle, so do not hit them. Oh, this car is coming in hot. Where are you going to go? Where are you going, buddy? Uh, oh, oh, you going to get on his butt? What you going to do? You going to push him out of the way? You gonna push them out of the way with your with your loud engine? Oh, I'm getting behind y'all anyway. This guy, I love it when people come in hot. They think they're gonna have room to, to haul ass. And you know that car in those left lanes, they're going above the speed limit and these guys just wanna haul boogie. I bet she's gonna try to pass them on the right. Oh, what I tell you? Man, that's messed up. That car cut him off too. He got right in front of him in the left lane. Why are you gonna get in the left lane? You still had all this room in the right lane. See, some people drive like idiots. This person in the left lane, you know, they could have got over. That dude in front of him is driving like a butthole. I look at this beautiful land all around us and see all the beautiful vegetation growth everywhere in the summertime, especially everything's full bloom. It makes me appreciate the area I live in. We have to find a more sustainable way to take care of the land we own, the soil we own, not own. We don't own the soil. I know people own land now, but this land is for everybody. Like they say in the song, this land is your land, this land is my land. And they took that land from other people, you know, and the, those people are actually willing to share that land with you. I want to talk about soil conservation and how important that is. They're trying to get you to fear that it's irreversible. Well, it's, it is reversible and we just have to, as a collective, work on it together to fix it. And it's as simple as better soil. You have better soil, you can reverse desertification. It's called a regenerative farming and it has been done in different parts of the world. They have taken land that the soil was depleted of nutrients and over a span of 10-15 years they reversed it's important to take care of the soil that's the foundation of, of life on uh, plant life and our life you know because you can't have one without the other if you can soak up the carbon from the atmosphere through the plants through good soil soil holds a lot of carbon and it can reverse the amount of carbon in our atmosphere and it is doable so we have to work towards that and I see all these ideas for solutions they don't make any sense they actually are gonna make the issue worse one of the things that they want to do is to paint the asphalt with this white coat that reflects the heat from the sun you're already suffocating the earth with the asphalt everywhere all over its vicinity and now you're gonna give it a plastic coat on top of that to cover up any porousness that may be there that's not a good idea at all you're just basically saran wrap the planet eventually because paint is a coat of plastic that is not a good idea that is not a good solution it's funny uh, people are trying to come up with these temporary solutions that are not good in the long run. What you need to do is plant a tree, feeding the soil in the deserts to replenish them so that we can grow vegetation on them again. And two thirds of the land uh, on this planet is desert. That's a great chunk that it's reversible that we can do it. And I believe they did it in China and they did it in Africa. There's proof right there that it is possible. That needs to be the priority right now. I don't want to sound like a tree hugger, but you know, that's this is what we have. This planet is the essence of our life, preserving our land and reversing the health of the soil. That is the most important part, and that's what we need to be focused on. I heard another thing that they're gonna try to suck the carbon out of the air with giant vacuums on planes. I don't know what that kind of solution is, but where are you, where are you gonna put that? Where you're gonna suck the carbon out and put it in space? You're just taking a trash out of one trash can and putting it into another. You're just moving the problem. You're not fixing the problem. As a people, we need to uh, 
you know, just plant some trees. It's as simple as that. Work on your soil. You put some wood chips on your on your soil and let it sit for a couple few years, and then stir that up. You're gonna get healthy soil. You put some compost on that, some manure. You you work work it into the soil. Um, it takes work. You're gonna have to put work in. Sure, I can get around this car. This is a traffic report, and I'm reporting about traffic. And uh, traffic has been picking up a little bit. Uh, I get in the left lane when I need to pass somebody, get back in the right lane, unless I need to be in the left lane. Now, I hear there are some places that are gonna make some laws saying that, you, that you, you have to use the right lane all the time, unless you're passing, and that's the only time you can use the left lane. Well, I'll have to disagree with that because I think when, especially when traffic's really thick, it's good to be in the left lane if both lanes are full because you're gonna have your continuous flow of traffic now if you're in the right lane everyone's gonna be stopping and going I believe I'm correct on this because um, you're just gonna make it a little more dangerous to drive on the interstate that way if if that were the law you know and to penalize people for riding the left lane I understand some people stay in it and there are some slow drivers that stay in the left lane and you know that I don't agree with if you're in the left lane you should be going faster than the cars in the right lane if you're not get in the right lane and then let the faster cars go but the left lane is all about flow you have to have that flow on the interstate for it to go for it to work it depends on what lane I'm going to be in depending on how much space I have in front of me I'm always going to go to this lane that has more space in front of me uh, as far as uh, the distance between me and the car in front of me because I don't like hitting my brakes I don't ever want to hit my brakes if I'm on the interstate right now these slow cars are slowing down in front of me I'm not hit, touching the brakes I just let off the gas when I need to hit the brakes that's when I'll hit the brakes you're creating wear and tear these cars in front of me they're riding their brakes they're gonna burn them out they're gonna have to replace their brakes a lot quicker I haven't touched mine once I've been going downhill I have enough space between me and the car in front of me and that's the way you should drive if you anticipate you're gonna go downhill just kind of let it off a little earlier um, you kind of want to go into a little slower because your car is going to speed up. Oh man, look at this beautiful view that's going over the Green River. Um, it's summertime. We're at mid-August in uh, North Carolina, western North Carolina to be exact. And I'm going uphill, up this grade. So I'm hitting the gas. I got a barrier on my right. I'm going about 70 miles per hour. But you want to have that momentum when you're going uphill. You don't want to start off slow because then you're just going to stay slow. So you need to get that momentum going and then it starts to ease up after a little bit. This car's getting off of me. Ooh, this car's stopping so I'm getting over too. Still haven't hit my brakes. And especially if I'm going uphill, you let go of the gas, you're going to slow down. These guys are being safe they're driving up the grade they're taking their time they're not put too much stress on their engines it's kind of tough with them big old trucks that's a lot of weight they have to haul up them hills you just be a safe driver that's what's important you have to be aware of the cars around you at all times know what's going on behind you more importantly know what's going on in front of you I don't let the traffic behind me define how I drive I do my own thing in my lane. I imagine myself, I'm on my own train track. Uh, I'm gonna do what I do on my train track regardless of the tra trains around me, or in this case, it's the cars around me. If someone's riding my butt, I'm not gonna speed up just because of them and put myself in danger, and you shouldn't either. If they wanna go around you, let them go around you. If they're on your butt and you're in the left lane, get in the right lane. Uh, if there's a continuous flow if you're if there's cars in front of you and you can't go any further you mean stay in that left lane because you're, you're not in their way they're just gonna get in one car ahead of you what the kind of hurry is that you know I'm in the left lane and there's a car in front of me and there's a big semi truck in the right lane uh, coming up so I'm just gonna stay in this lane and enjoy these mountain views so I'm getting the right lane right now for a little bit unless this car is going really slow it looks like these two are neck and neck, so maybe they'll race. So they have to turn this quick left right here, and then bam, bam, try not to hit the barricades. The traffic report, I'm reporting about traffic, and these barricades can cause damage to your vehicle, so do not hit them. 
Oh, this car is coming in hot. Where are you going to go? Where are you going, buddy? Uh, oh, oh, you going to get on his butt? What you going to do? You going to push him out of the way? You going to push him out of the way with your, with your loud engine? Oh, I'm getting behind y'all anyway. This guy, I love it when people come in hot. They think they're going to have room to to haul ass and you know that car in those left lanes they're going above the speed limit and these guys just want to haul boogie i bet she's going to try to pass them on the right oh what i tell you man that's messed up car cut him off too he got right in front of him in the left lane why are you going to get in the left lane? You still had all this room in the right lane. See, some people drive like idiots. And this person in the left lane, you know, they could have got over, but that dude in front of him is driving like a butthole. I don't know why he hit his brakes. There's nobody in front of him. Well, yeah, this is how traffic goes in Asheville. This is the traffic report, and I'm reporting about traffic. Um, There's not much of it right now. I got lucky I got on the interstate. There wasn't a car in front of me. There wasn't a car behind me. Just these beautiful mountain views. Man, I just can't get enough of these mountain views. It's a beautiful area all around you. Great place to hike. It's the main reason I moved up here was the good old Appalachian Trail. Me and my buddy wanted to do it. And we set a plan forward and we moved closer to it. We would practice on the Mountain to Sea Trail. We were fortunate enough to get into a good neighborhood in East Asheville, which was right next to the Blue Ridge Parkway. Blue Ridge Parkway has a hiking trail that parallels for a good bit of it called the Mountain to Sea Trail. It goes from Mount Mitchell in North Carolina all the way to the coast going east. That was in the back of our neighborhood. I could just walk out of the front door and go for a hike. And it was a good training grounds for the Appalachian Trail because it had similar terrain and I could test out gear and see, you know, what works and what doesn't. And it was a great experience. I made a nice sweet home in Asheville. It was an awesome place to live. I've been out on the farm now for just under two years. The farm is great because it's so peaceful and quiet out there. And it's really good for your stress levels. Just walk outside, get a breath of fresh air, go hang out with the cows, the goats, the chickens, the horses, the dogs, the cats, some deer, some turkey, coyotes. I haven't seen any bears, but it's out there. It's on a spacious farm. Oh, this truck better get out of my lane. Thank you guys very much. I'm Pizza Steve. Always eat your crust. Good night.